Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. Who do we got on the show today, Alan? Charlie Benanti, a fellow that we love having on. We don't have him on nearly enough. That's the problem. <laughs> Look, I went to get my Anthrax shirt. Oh, I love I'm, it. I'm the man. <laughs> I'm the man. I, you designed this, didn't you? Or you kind of like sketched it? Is that what it was? Well, I think uh, that whole concept of that uh, rubber doll figure, um, the, the story for the Not Man is pretty... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you really quick. We were signed to Island Records and um, well, the, the name of this uh, album was Spreading the Disease. They did this ad for us with his face on it and it said, by George, I think he's got it. And uh, that ad was like everywhere. And all of a sudden people started throwing the rubber uh, puppet things on stage. <laughs> and then we, we, uh, we put him on a shirt and it just became like uh, this iconic type of thing. And it just never stopped. So that was it. Anthrax version of Eddie. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was not taken from Wayne's World or was it before Wayne's World? Or was it the other way around? It was the other way around, yeah. yeah. Scott, um, Scott in his neighborhood in Queens in school, because his name was Scott, I think they would always say Scott not, you know, and it became like a thing where you would say not as no, you know, and then it just became something. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wayne's World picked it up and became mainstream. Now I've got it. Wayne's World. Wayne, yeah. Okay, here we go. On the show today, Silver Lining, due out on May 14th on Megaforce Records. Not a solo album. Let's not confuse it with a solo album. A collection of cover tunes by Charlie and friends. Well needed uh, breath of uh, positive fresh air during these dark times. Well, that's exactly where the title comes from is silver linings. I tried to see uh, out of the darkness and the depression um, that there were silver linings. You know, I, I would see comments from people all over and just things online. I'd be like, man, we're all going through this. Some of us are, are having it way harder than a lot of people are. And um, there are silver linings. I would, I would see people complaining about their kids and shit like that. And it'd be like, man, enjoy it. You're getting to have all this time off to spend with your kids that you would never have. Like, enjoy it. Just embrace it. So just, just little things like that, man. It's, you know, God, people love complaining. <laughs> it seems like sometimes and again you know i was lucky tuning in on your your youtube channels and all the little songs you've done with with you know rush and and now we got a whole album with with, with these covers on it it's just fantastic but you know i wasn't going to even put them out like this and i kept getting uh asked to do it more and more and more and more and then i was like all right i'll do it and uh i don't know man it was just hard to choose which ones to put on there um because if I put the Rush songs on, on this, it would take up a lot of the space on it. I, I had the idea to um, put a Rush EP out for Record Store Day uh, oh, next, yeah. November, next November. Uh, so we're going to do that. That's going to be fun because it's just going to be all the Rush st songs by themselves. So that was like, whew, okay, I could do that and then concentrate on some of the other songs. Um, but a lot of the songs on this record are just songs that were always in the back of my mind, songs that I loved. And I, I just had to find the right people to, um, to, to make them happen, you know? And once I did, we were off, you know, just snowballed into... You know, you know Alan, Alan and Charlie, to me, it's kind of, it brings me back to my childhood, I guess, because we're all more or less the same age, right? And you know, I, you know, you two and Run DMC and Public Image, and so to me, it's kind of like going back in time a little bit of a, a different time, a different era. I got to say, I'm most impressed with Marcus Segueda, who's been on the show a lot of times. His vocal delivery on you two, and uh, you know, it, it's just incredible. Mark keeps getting better. He keeps getting better over. You know, the older he gets, the better he gets. It's it's it's. I I, I always said that I I heard this quality in Mark's voice that. Uh, 
like maybe he's another one that maybe I pushed him out of his comfort zone for the YouTube stuff, you know, and, but I knew he could do it because I always heard, heard it in his voice. Like uh, the mother love bone song to me was that's, that was easy for Mark because we bonded over that type of stuff. And we, I knew Mark can handle that and do a great job, but the U2 song, I think maybe it pushed him a little bit more, but he, he's a pro man. He just, he, he, he made something, happened and i was so happy about it yeah well, you know we got paul stanley who released soul station something completely different from what he has, what he's done in the past with kiss and now we got you know your choice of selection for this is equally as uh, as different and amazing yeah i mean i left off all my motown songs but <laughs> you know <laughs> uh but uh yeah exactly paul paul stanley i think is probably embracing his childhood like I, yeah. I i did you know um when i would come home from school i'd be so excited about coming home and playing the new rush album on the drums and this was the same thing i'd come up to my art room and i set up a, a digital drum kit and i would just play like like it was when i was when i was younger and um i think that's the thing that as a musician you need to find the passion and, and the love that you had and bring it out now, you know? So that's exactly where this comes from. Uh, and I knew uh, some other musician friends of mine were probably experiencing the same kind of dark, depressing thing that I was. And that's why I asked some of them to do this too. Transylvania. But yeah. Look at that. To, I mean, I, I, me and Alan were saying, wow, okay, well, there's an odd choice. Transylvania, you know, an instrumental what do you remember from the Diano era of Maiden? I mean, is that your favorite era or is it just a, a more memorable one? Uh, first time I saw them was with uh, Paul Diano. It was at the Palladium in New York. They opened up for Judas Priest and I went both nights. And um, when Iron Maiden came on, it was that excitement and that feeling of I'm, I'm witnessing something for the first time that is... Uh, I don't know if I'll ever see it again, but um, it was so amazing. That band to me since day one was uh, the reason why I think we started a band, you know, to, to model our band like Iron Maiden. Yeah, yeah like a lot of bands from that time. Yeah, I think and, so. Uh, I think that band single-handedly created the form of music that would become thrash metal. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, you know, what I take away from your album here is, is, you know, I was unfamiliar with the U2 song and the mother love bone song, but I knew exactly who they were without having, having these songs uh, heard, heard them before. And then Transylvania, you've got the guitar sound and, and everything that's right from that, that era. So hats off. I mean, you, you put us right into that time frame. Yeah. That was the one thing about, but I would tell everybody, I like the attention to detail. I say, I, I want it to sound as authentic as the original as it possibly could be. Um, so even the drum tones, I tried to get as close as possible to the, each track, like uh, the Fleetwood Mac song. Yeah. I, I wanted it to have that 70s, you know, vibe, that sound. And just, yeah, it does sound. Yeah, it's got the vibe. It, it definitely you nailed has it. Yeah. You, nailed yeah. It. You, you know what? You're actually, you're bringing these songs that people, maybe our generation didn't hear to a new generation. And I think you're sort of, it, it, it's crossing into another world. I think that's what I think. I mean, I'm listening to them and yeah, I know Mr. Speed and I know, uh, you know, uh, all the way, <laughs> but, but maybe that's more of a, you know, all the way is, is a deeper cut that maybe the, the newer metal fans will say aren't really, you know, familiar with. Those two Kiss songs uh, have always been some of my favorite Kiss songs, and uh, like I treat those songs as if they were uh, Rock and Roll All Night or Detroit Rock City. Um, they've always been up there for me, especially All the Way. I, I always wish that All the Way was on Alive. Yeah, um, just, just just to have that sound and that treatment, you know. Uh, and Mr. Speed is just a classic Paul Stanley song. It's just one of the greatest. It's got to be 40 years since I heard that song. So thanks for putting that on the album. And I guess that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm kind of getting so at. So much memories. It's like, <laughs> wow, I've completely forgot about that song. You know? 
I haven't. <laughs> you know, you know what song I, I I forgot about was Public Image, Public Image, right? I haven't heard that song in ages. You know, I, I'm a big Sex Pistols fan that I am, and Public Image not so much, but I do like a, a few tracks that I think are killer from the band. You know, and and that one is just and and actually you kept it. The essence of it is still there. That vibe, that that pure vibe, that the original one. It sounded kind of like the original in a way. I mean. Well, the, the, the thing about that song is um, uh, my friends in the band, Sum 41, we always wanted to do one of these together. And the trade off was I wanted to do public image and then they wanted to do a collection of like kind of metal songs, you know. So we did that, too, but didn't make it on this uh, release. But the public image song and a funny story about public image in general Um uh, back when I was younger, my sister was, was a hairstylist and she would work in Manhattan, New York. And her salon that she worked at was down in down the city. And below the salon was this store called Disco Mat. And it was a record store. And sometimes I would go to work with her and she would give me money and I'd spend hours in mm -hmm. Disco Mat, you know, buying or look, looking for whatever. One day I was in there. And there was one other person in the store. This was early. This was like 11 uh, before lunch. And this guy had on a long tweed jacket, carrying a bag, and he had like a beret on. As soon as I saw him, I said, that's Johnny Rotten. Yeah, and yeah, Johnny. <laughs> and uh, I immediately went right over to him. And as I got closer, he turned to me and he went, shh, like that, which meant, do Shut not up. bother me. So I continued to go through the store looking for what I got. And then I noticed he was checking out, paying for what he was, was you know, purchasing or whatever. And he called me over and I went over and we had a little discussion, like, what's going on? What are you doing here? And he says he's working on a new project, which would become public image. And we talked a little further. He never said the Sex Pistols broke up or anything. And then he took a disco mat card, turned it over and signed it for me. And I still have that card. That <laughs> That's cool, man. Card. That's cool, man. And, and uh, I'll never forget when I first heard that first public image, I was blown away because it wasn't, it didn't sound like the Sex Pistols, but there was something about it. This avant-garde type of, uh, the bass player was, uh, what's his name, Jaw Wobble, which is, everything was just great on that. And Johnny was great. And uh, yeah, so that's my public image story. That's, that's a, a you know, story. not too many people, uh, you know, bump into Johnny Rotten like that, you know, so that's pretty cool. Uh, what about... I, I almost bumped into Donald Sutherland with my car here in Montreal <laughs> one time. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> okay, I bumped into uh, Kenny Rogers. And I was swimming and I bumped into him <laughs> in Acapulco. Um, is that true, really? It's true, yeah. I was swimming and boom, I bumped into Kenny Rogers who was in the pool in Acapulco, this, this nice place. And, and and at first you're kind of like wondering, what is who is this guy in front of me? And like, this is like back in 1980-something. I'm like, who is this guy? And then, then everybody swarmed around him in the pool. It was just like you signing autographs after that. It's, it's, well, anyways, whatever. He had a Sharpie. Oh, it's just it weird, man. It's just weird. Man. But anyways... Um, That's a great story. Yeah. Um, this is this is what I find fascinating. From from where you are, where, where, you, where you grew up in New York, and you had these sort of American black hard rockers and rap, and it all kind of mixed together. You know, look at Funny Vibe from, you know, uh, uh, from uh, Living Color and and the Beastie Boys, and, and this, this mesh. Anthrax was sort of at the forefront of this metal rap sort of, soul thing happening or funk i mean can you tell us a little bit about that and, and and how much you love that type of music and how you like to integrate it into i don't know if that's a question <laughs> no 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 i mean the funny thing about that that whole vibe or that sound that was coming out of new york it, it was always something that to me there was no boundaries like i just i just liked it you know what i mean there was never a question of you shouldn't like it or or anything um so it was just open to me it's like it's music i hear it i like it you know so that basically the when anthrax were going to do a song uh and it was like around 19 it was like 86 around that time we were going to do this song called i'm the man that we wrote 
but the Beastie Boys were originally going to do it with us. They were going to oh, do yeah. the rap. Oh, okay. And, and um, but scheduling wise, it wasn't going to happen. You know, they were on a different level at that point too, you know? Um, so we decided to do it and that's how that happened. Uh, but we were completely in love with like certain types of uh, rap music, um, especially like the, the Run DMC stuff, the Eric B and Markham was another one. And man, I don't know, for me growing up in the Bronx, I mean, graffiti to me was like, you know, I, I was used to it. I saw it every day when I would come out of school on the train. And uh, so I always loved it. I never thought of it as vandalism. I just thought of it as like, I love that. That looks cool. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, I think that's why I kind of embraced rap music. Would you ever so, would you ever put another form of rap in in a, in, a, in a future Anthrax album? Like maybe have you know uh, Chuck D or some guest? Are you still open yeah. to something like that? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I was I'm working with uh, with D right now on on a song that is coming out pretty awesome. <laughs> I must say, wow. like I was like, whoa, this is taking off, like really well but i won't discuss it now all right, all right, all right. <laughs> we'll get we'll have you back we'll, on to discuss yeah okay. yeah 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 we'll call you in a week i mean you know uh, i'm the I, man I, we just go ahead no i was gonna say we we've always been open to something else but we always said if we couldn't top like the bring the noise thing then we didn't want to do it you know Man, we wore out the grooves on "I'm the Man" vinyl. I still got it downstairs. It's it, it was it was something back in the day. It was really something different, and that just everybody latched onto. So it was such a fun song, and it was uh, uh, it's one of those things where it's kind of accidental that it happened. You know? Yeah. You know? Um, I, okay. So what else? Okay, you got this album coming out, and it's what May. I'm gonna go 14th. back here. May 14th, a mega force. And you got this book, this coffee table book. Is You want to just tell us about that quickly? Uh, the art book? The art book, yes, 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 yes. So the, the art book uh, that's, that's, that's out is a collection of artists that punk rock and paintbrushes have worked with and, and have found. And we have a chapter in it, Carla and I, and it just tells a story about how we got started in, in art. And it has some of our paintings and stuff like that. Um, and that's basically the gist of it. Other artists are in it. And it's a really cool book of different types of art. It always amazes me how I always said, you know, you walk this way for a reason. That means you talk away for a reason. That means you're going to have a, a, a totally different type of art, artistic view of things, too. And it's so it always amazes me how, wow, you did that. You know, it just I'm always astonished by by people and what they can achieve. They yeah. really push themselves. Well, no, I mean, we've had the time, unfortunately, too much time in the last year just to kind of develop a lot of this stuff and push ourselves, like you said, to, to, to explore new avenues and then just do something different for the sake of doing something. Right, exactly. That That was the whole reason behind, like, the, the whole year was spent doing music and art. Uh, and and trying to stay safe, you know, yeah. making sure my daughter was safe, making sure I was safe, like Carla was safe. Like we just followed the guidelines and, you know, tried not to panic. And that was it, you know, and just be good, good people to, and, and, to, and, to each other. And I guess on a last note, you know, an update on Anthrax. I mean, since you had all this time, you know, you're doing the solo work. Or is there any update on the new album or, What's going on there? Are you allowed to talk about it, or? I mean, we are going to start working on the, the the record again. I mean, before COVID hit, we had about seven, eight songs that were killer, and uh, we're going to continue working on those and more. So, um, but we didn't want to put a record out during this time because we felt it would just get sucked up in that COVID vacuum. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to wait and so at least we can go out and play these songs you know what i mean yeah it's so, been a while it's been a while i guess it's been some time now when was the last one four years ago four years ago i think yeah yeah i think february of uh 16 mm -hmm. wow wow nice. wow wow is there anything else you yeah. want to uh, throw out yeah, there what's happening anything else in charlie bernandi's world here uh 
no, I'm going to go have a cup of coffee in a little bit. And <laughs> I'm okay. um, no, man, I just, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm encouraged to, to, you know, to get out and start doing things again and maybe get back to normalcy. I don't think it's going to be the normal that we once had. I think there's still going to be a couple of little guidelines that we're going to have to follow. But, uh, the, the more, most important thing is just take care, take care of each other here. You know what I mean? This, uh, uh, in America, things have gotten really ugly and I wanted to get back to a place where you are nice to your fellow neighbor and, and it's just you know, not an asshole to people. Yeah. Yeah. Anymore. Some healing, some healing is indeed, I mean, that's what they need. Um, this rush EP, are, are we putting 2112 on or are we putting Xanadu on? What are we doing here? <laughs> if, if, if I put, well, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, so, they're going to be. We're putting anthem on anthem. We're going to have anthem. No, no, we're going to have. Uh, we have what do we have? We have uh, YYZ. We have Red Barchetta. We have uh, Free Will. Oh. We have La Villa is on there. Cygnus. On there, and then and no, and then we're doing one new one that's going to be on there, and we're going to premiere that next week because. April 5th will be the one year anniversary that I put out the first quarantine video. And that yes. was a rush song. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's so, right. yeah. That's right. That's right. So April 5th, which is next week, we're going to put out the last and final rush <laughs> song. And, 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 and we should tell everybody to do that too, Alan, go check out Charlie Benate's YouTube page where all these quarantine yeah, videos be, are right. And forget that. And that. pick up the coffee too. pick up Charlie Benate's coffee. Please pick up the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I got bills to pay. There you go. Bills to pay. On that I note, I, go ahead. I, the YouTube uh, it got me through the past year. Really enjoyable, and all your guests host uh, guest uh, uh, people playing the instruments. It's just it was it was a great thing. I thank you for that because it really uh, darkened some uh, lightened some dark days for me. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And it actually lightened some of my darkest days too. <laughs> All right. Again, we had, we had Frank Bello on in the past with Jimmy. They great. Some of my favorite interviews between the Jimmy and Frank. And uh, we thank you. You're always a gentleman, Charlie. And it's always a pleasure to have you on the show here on the metal voice. Thank you guys. I can't wait to uh, play heavy MTL again. It's like one of my favorite, uh, I'm not kidding. One of my favorite festivals. It's that one. Yeah. We had a good time inducting you there. That was fun. It was, uh, wow, man, this is crazy. Yeah, it was good. <laughs>